we're Rich and Chris, and the day starts off with a stuff sack nightmare. Later, though, we got to meet up with an old friend. Leave it to Rich to keep the bike riding exciting. And even Chris struggles. We are at what I think is called the Cheta Cheta Sheesh. Oh my gosh. Chattatooga? Yes, I got it, I got it, okay. But we can't wait to share with you all the spectacular things along the way. It's called Moody Springs, but we're gonna get some water. And a visit to an old haunt that kind of breaks our heart. So did he have to hold, totally abandon this place? Because he was living upstairs. What you doing? I think there's got to be a better way because these in here are all the stuff sacks that the stuff gets stuffed into. <laughs> so say that five times fast. Check, check this out. That's all the stuff sacks? Uh, that's all the stuff oh, sacks. Man. So we have a stuff sack stuffing sack. A so, stuff sack sack stuffing stack. I mean, it's like confetti. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. We'll get it. It stuffs. It makes everything small so we can pack it on the bikes. Do you want to go over what the stuff sacks yeah. are for? <laughs> yeah, let's go over the stuff sacks. This is the stuff sack king of the stuff sacks because this is going to receive all the stuff that's in the stuff sacks. It's also supposed to be waterproof if you put it on right. It, yeah, and well, and it is waterproof. It, it's it's mostly water resistant. Let's just say that because in a heavy, heavy downpour, there ain't a darn thing that stays dry. So these two go to the pillows. This is my chair that I'm sitting on. These are the, the BMW MOA bags that are gonna hold the, the sleeping bags and the pillows once they're in. These are for the cot. And then these two Oops, make sure we don't lose the little straps inside of them are for the air pads. What's that blue one over there? The oh, blue one is a is a my, random. No, that's my um bl Oh, that's a blanket. blanket one. And then this is for the tent. Okay. Okay. Get to work. Okay, regard to all those stuff sacks and all this stuff we're going to be revealing to you that we brought. Just know that this was our test run. So, I don't want to beat a dead horse. However, it really 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 is important to if you can if you can't do a one night trip take a ride around the block the night before you leave because you will be rearranging and reevaluating the stuff that you're bringing it just took us you know 1100 miles to figure it out we're slow learners what can i say <laughs> learn from our mistakes as we continue to make them even after we're going on our third year on the road yeah so we wanted to talk about what we've learned with this new setup that we have. Yes, I want to say first, <laughs> we made a mistake. We yes. have learned our lesson. We always learn something. It's it's really kind of comical sometimes yeah. when you think back on it. Here's, here's two mistakes that we made. Number one, we did not do an overnight test run. Well, I guess you could consider this an overnight test run. We just had to ride 400 and some miles to do it. Right. <laughs> we would not recommend that when you have um, any type of gear or you're loading your bikes up. But we overloaded the motorcycles. I brought too much stuff. What, what, what is it that you sent back? I can't. I'm just never mind. Moving on. <laughs> it wasn't hair, necessary. Hair dryer. In fact, is my hair good? Yeah. Okay. Because sometimes she just lets me talk with my hair standing up like this. The other mistake that we made is we bought a very inexpensive tent thinking that, well, we don't need to invest a lot of money in a tent because our idea this summer is leave base camp, go out for a couple weeks, stay in the tent and then come back to base camp mm -hmm. and, you know, do our business of editing and stuff like that. Right. However, our very first day out, we ran into this. Rain. <laughs> Rain the entire time out, out here. Yes. So what we found, what we did is we bought a very inexpensive tent from Walmart. Yeah. I like the design of it. Yeah. Because it's two poles. It's pretty simple. But now that we've been in it, we understand that inexpensive is not the way to go, especially if you plan on hitting any rain or 
inclement weather. At least in this type of tent, because if we get rain in this tent, even with everything closed up, the way this tent is designed, mm -hmm. we will get, if it's a driving rain or even a hard rain, we will get drenched in right. here. <laughs> the, the bottom is not, is not very thick. Uh, we have a tarp under it, but it's still, it would not work. So it's a one season tent. It's a one season tent. <laughs> so that's, this tent does not work. Plus a seam has failed and, or a, the floor has failed already with just a little bit of stuff we had in it. So this tent will be going back um, to Wally World here uh, soon. Yes, we're gonna regroup. We're gonna find us a better tent. Hopefully, mm -hmm. fingers crossed, it's not doesn't break the bank, but we do know that we need something else. Learn, <laughs> learn from our mistakes. Good tent, check the weather. And do a test run. <laughs>
scary yeah <laughs> that was all me <laughs> that's giving me a vote of confidence to do this that was that was me babe that okay. was just me okay just just turn in you're uh. good that was me dropping the clutch Ugh. a year ago we met kenny at zion national park and now we're at his house all right we're at our friends kenny's house and he has graciously volunteered to take us on a tour around here. So, let's go see where we're gonna go today. And that's where I was hoping to take us today, so over to 107. And then there's a road that cuts across here that takes us up to Whitewater Falls. Whitewater Falls, it's one of the tallest waterfalls, I think, in the Southeast. Oh, okay. And then from there, there's a, what they call Gorgeous State Park. It's got a really, really nice visitor center that uh, its claim to fame is it gets the most rainfall anywhere in the southeast. Check this map out. You have got to, I highly suggest that you, if you're in the area, it's upside down. Oops, hold on. Okay, check this map out. It is made by Freeman Maps. I am really, really excited about this map. Look at all these roads. Check it out. Look, look, look. I mean, they keep going in every direction. You could go everywhere, and every road is fantastic out here. Check it out. All right, we're gonna head out for a day of riding today. Uh, we're gonna go wander all over, and the only thing we're not gonna do is hit any dirt roads. Uh, I kind of nixed that because of my tires. So anyway, we'll see y'all out on the road. I think it's called the Cheta Cheta Sheesh. Oh my gosh. Chattatooga? Yes. I got it. I got it. Okay, we're at the Chattatooga town. It looks like maybe it was the original Chattatooga town. I don't know, but they say that it was largely abandoned by 1740. Walter Dare was the last Cherokee who used to live here. So let's go check out. Well, how Walter lived. Okay, so obviously I landed here and I have done absolutely no research. Really, really looks fascinating because there's a sign over here. It says it's the Russell Farm Stead. There's a sign over here that says Walter Adair lived here. <laughs> so I'm not for sure which sign is correct. So maybe Google will enlighten me later on. However, I just had to stop because it looks really, really cool. So let's find out what this is or at least what it looks like. Okay, I have a little bit more information about here. Ganaway Russell built this house in the late 1800s. Well, there's really no house. Anyway, he settled here in the late 1800s. So we're here. Yeah. And that's where the house was, which is right over there. And then we saw the old barn, which is right over there. And then the pig pharaoh, the barn. Storage, storage, another barn, corn crib, tata, apple orchard. Wow, very cool. So over here, I think we have his livery stable, his barn, not for sure, but pretty creek going through the um, here where they get their water. Maybe there was a well. Okay, one more piece of trivia, Ganaway. Ganaway married Jane Nicholson and they had 
15 children. So they set this up as an inn, they ran it, they had lots of guests come. One time they even had 80 guests and they had to cook 20 turkeys. <laughs> so besides raising 15 children, serving 80 guests, cooking, having an apple orchard, uh, corn, potatoes, growing their own crops, everything. Wow, these people were really, really busy. But it's a beautiful setting. All right, so we pulled over to this natural spring. It's kind of natural. Anyway, it's called Moody Springs, but we're gonna get some water. Mm, it's good water too. Mm -hmm. Cold, good. I got a good time. Give y'all some perspective on where we're at. <laughs> we're gonna go see some waterfalls next. Awesome. Yeah. they did to this beautiful just curvy road that we've been riding on and enjoying <laughs> they went and grounded the road all up yeah we passed some motorcycles back there and they were they were not happy they were not happy they were on little what crotch rockets or something and one guy's riding with one foot down on the ground yeah just when you're riding along enjoying the road bam road construction check out check out what the, they're doing to this road they're like tearing it up how are you Oh, he said it's going to be five or ten minutes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, let's see. Somewhere your model to mine. I like it. When yeah, you're on the V-Strong, yeah. Yeah. Oh. 2013, what's, what's your model for? 12. 12, okay. Yeah. That's the first year for that model. I think so. Yep. Yeah. Too far of a hike because I didn't put my hiking it's shoes on. <laughs> it, it doesn't seem. It says a half mile. Yes, 154 steps. That's I don't know if you can see it, yeah, but it says 154 steps, and then 154 steps up. <laughs> but I gotta see this waterfall from the bottom. It's beautiful. So words pictures, videos, nothing can compare or describe the beauty of this waterfall. This is truly one of the most outstanding waterfalls we have been to so far. It is beautiful. White waterfalls. Gorgeous State Park. Not gorgeous, but 
gorgeous. gorgeous. <laughs> because it counts, sounds like... Not, not the beautiful. Yeah. Not the beautiful state park. Yeah. Or gorgeous state park. Yeah. The gorge. Yes. Is it a gar, a gorge. Yes. But it's plural. Gorges. Which... Gorgeous. I felt like I was making it sound like gorgeous. Yeah. Anyway, we're making this pit stop here. Let's see what is gorgeous about the gorgeous state park. We're just enjoying having a tour guide show us all these yeah. awesome places that we would probably just ride right on by. So this is inches? Yeah, this the average is inches per, per month per or per year? Per, oh. Per year anyway. Okay. Yeah, okay, anyway. so here's Asheville's average rainfall, 37 inches per year. This one is, oh, we'll skip this one because this one's the granddaddy. This is Charlotte. Yeah, 43 inches. This is Raleigh, 46 inches, average rainfall. Now, let's go back to the big one, which is where we're at right now, the state park. Yeah, 91 inches, way over my head. Wow, that's pretty, that's a lot of rain. So this is a black bear. Look at those claws. Wow. It'd be warm. Warm to wear. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I say all, but I'm sure I wouldn't be saying all if I met him on the trail somewhere. Really pretty here. We're not for sure how many gorges are here. I think to see them, you need to go for a hike, which we're not geared up for that for today, but we'll be back. Put down your bucket list. Gorgeous State Park it is gorgeous. We've been riding around a little bit, trying to find a lunch place. The problem is we've done so much sightseeing, so many awesome, so much awesome riding that it's like after two and a lot of these places are just open for breakfast and lunch. So I think we found a pizzeria. We're gonna go in and have some lunch. Thank you. Blue Ridge Parkway. Oh, there it is. How oh, cool. I wonder what the elevation is here. I mean, these trees are just now popping. And it's just, you know, the last time we were here, Chris was on the K-bike and I was on my Harley. Look at the bridge. Wow. That's amazing. That's crazy. We stopped for a nostalgic moment at the, uh, what was used to be the Blue Ridge Motorcycle Campground. We were here back, let's see, Richard was riding the Harley, pulling the bush tech. We were living in the tent. I had my K-bike. <laughs> yeah, wow. 
and it was absolutely stunning. It just stunning here. It's so heartbreaking to see the bridge is gone. Yeah. Look, Ooh. see the see the wheels. Oh yeah. yeah. The wheels are one on the side, and wow. then the other one upside down. So did he have to hold, totally abandon this place? Because he was living upstairs in that building. I think they got an agreement with a with a property owner. Oh. He can come in from the other side, but oh. can't cross the property. This is the campground. This is the campground. That we got the idea to get Ruby. Oh, that's right. Yes, we were. The couple guys had, I think they had a blue. They had a blue one and a red. They there was a, a blue one. one and a red one. They both had gold wings. Yep. And they both had gold wings. Yep. Yeah. So and this, that's where, that's, this is where we decided that, okay, we got to get the pop-up camper. We were in the tent yep. and got the camper. Yes. Literally can, within two weeks. Three weeks yeah, from here? Yeah, we figured we could do another year and a pop-up motorcycle. And we did. <laughs> okay, I have a confession that I have to make. And I just recently confessed this to Richard. On our trip out to the Georgia MOA rally, while we were out there wandering around, I decided to walk around um, in my stocking feet, uh, slammed my pinky toe against a rock, broke my pinky toe and didn't tell Richard about it and then proceeded the entire time to shove my foot into a boot. And then and on the last day we did over 700 miles. So when we got back that night and I took my boot off, my foot was all swollen, all the toes were black and blue. Yeah, anyway, so it's confession time. I probably should have told Richard about it, but there's nothing you can do. It's a pinky toe, what are you gonna do? I wasn't gonna stop riding, I mean, come on. <laughs> So today we're going to go for a ride and this is the first time I'm going to sh put my foot back into a boot. It, it is healing, but um, yeah, it's not quite there yet. So this will be fun. <laughs> I'm not looking forward to this. Not bad. Huh? Not bad. Not bad? It's doable. Kind of holds it in place. Maybe it's like a boot splint. <laughs> That's what we'll call it. If you, break your if you break your toe, just walk around your motorcycle boots. It'll hold it in place till it heals. Just take it off when you take a shower.